Yes. So uh, the concept is the following. I think that ODF, we have been uh, used to think about ODF uh, as a format. And uh, if we compare the formats, then we start and we, we start getting into complex technical discussion, which uh, are always based also on opinion. So you can say that doing that kind of feature in that way or in the other one is better or worse, and that is technical. I think that ODF has to be uh, considered as a standard, uh, because the what is absolutely true is that ODF is a real standard, while Office of XML is not a standard at all. If we consider that under the standard point of view and we completely ignore the fact that it can be or not a good format. So we, open source is shared knowledge and uh, we have a battle of two standards. So ODF has a logo, Office Open XML has not a logo. Someone designed it with bananas and I think it's the appropriate logo is the Office Open XML done with bananas. You should consider additionally that the only thing that they do not eat is are bananas. So for me, this, as I said, is disgusting, okay, in terms of personal feeling. So uh, I try to, as you know that I'm not technical, so I try to give you an overview as a, let's say, power user of the performance. So audit, and uh, let's take by the, the ODF in general. So ODF, uh, there's ODT, but it's wrong. So it should be ODF by LibreOffice. Uh, the hidden complexity that you find in the files is very low or no, no hidden complexity at all. When uh, LibreOffice writes Office of an XML, the approach is the same because, of course, the, the, the way that the, 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 the software saves uh, a file is more or less the same. So I can say that an Office of an XML file written by LibreOffice is cleaner, actually, of the same file written by Microsoft Office. And files are human readable. And this has a lot to do with security. Uh, and, an Office of an XML file written by Microsoft Office has the highest option of hidden complexity. And this is done on purpose, of course, because uh, it's more difficult to hide the complexity than not to put the complexity inside the file. Same approach when writing ODT. So an ODT is written by Microsoft Office, apart from the issues in terms of application of the standard, is more complex than the same file written by LibreOffice. And files, at the end, are not human readable. The the, the consequence of these two lines is that if you look at the database of vulnerabilities of the National Institute of Standard Technologies, which is uh, an, an organization of the American, of the US government, so I would say that it's neutral to close to proprietary software, uh, they, uh, and if you look at the last three years, uh, vulnerabilities refer to ODF are 11, vulnerability referred to Office of an XML are 184. And this has to do with the fact that not being human readable, the file can hide whatever you want. While a file that is human readable, if you tweak that file, it's a lot easier to spot where the file has been tweaked. So if you insert, for instance, a sim link in a, in a LibreOffice file, in a, in a in a good ODF file, the same link is a, is a lot easier to spot than, than the file, uh, than the Office of an XML file. But at the end of the speech, you will understand why. So this is, the, you know, the computer system have an hidden complexity to, to, to normal user. But let's say that while, it, while ODF is lower, in the case of Office of an XML, is the, is at the higher side. And uh, by the way, people tell me if this is Photoshop. No. This is a Microsoft manual that is how to lock in your clients. 
If you want it, I can send you the PDF. It's uh, easy to find on, on the web. Uh, and it's a manual. It's 2004. But no one since 2004 has said, oh, we wrote a stupid thing in 2004 and now we, uh, we are not locking, client, locking clients anymore. Difference in the, in the process. You, when you make a standard, there is a process. So this one, look at the timing. 2002 and then 2006 it was approved, but the 720 pages of the standard were uh, reviewed in 1,239 days. So it means that more or less two, one page every two days. In this one, uh, you have three years, so one year less. The, the standard document is 7,200 pages that have been reviewed in 838 days. So it means that 100 pages of review per day, more or less. And this is not piece and work by Tolstoy, it's a description of a standard, so you cannot read it with the same speed of a novel. So basically that means, and this is evidence, that means that the standard has not been reviewed. And so it's not a first, let's say, first hint that is not a standard. Second one, which standard do you reuse? ODF, WCORE, XLS, FO, SVG, MADML, XLIN, SMIL, XFORMS. So where there is a standard, ODF reuses the standard. Of course, this has to do with the lower number of pages of the scripture, because you, of course you don't re-describe MADML. You just say, go to the MathML standard and read the manual. Here, the only standard that has been reused is WCORE. core Thank you. Otherwise, it's not XML. Because Dublin core are the specification for the XML. So if you want to write an XML document, you must reuse the Dublin core So they reuse the only standard that they were forced to reuse. They have not reused another standard, second int that is not a standard. Proprietary file stack, this is a doc file. The PC, MS Windows, MS Word, and doc. And this is the pseudo standard file stack, PC, MS Windows, MS Word, and then you have the same. So there's no, you know, proprietary interface, proprietary Windows SDK, the XML specification. The only thing that is close to standard are the XML specification. All the rest of the stack is proprietary. ODF, ISO standard, ISO and W3C standard, ISO and W3C standards. Of course, this doesn't mean that ODF is perfect, but at least it's based on standards. So it's reusable, easy, and so on and so forth. Let's look at inside of ET. This is a uh, you know that both ODF files and the uh, Office of an XML file are, in fact, zip files that change the extension. So if you change the extension to zip, you you and, and you expand it, you get a you get a folder, and inside the folder there are documents. Uh, so this is the folder of an ODT file. Uh, Try to visually remember it. it you know the the the, the, the key element is content XML, that is the, the key element. Inside the docx, first, two levels, why two levels? So everything inside is inside the world. So let's say that one of the concepts when you do a standard is that a standard should be, especially if a standard covers different formats, as in the case of ODF and Office of an XML, it should be consistent for the different formats. So the structure of the files should be exactly the same. So this, we have two levels here. Okay, let's say that two levels are a very nice thought, so two levels are better than one. In Italy there is a, we say that there is a two levels are better than one. It's an ice cream advertising, but this is, this is not, it's good for ice cream, but not for standards. ODS, 
some, you know, some people had the, were so courageous to tell me that it, that ODF is boring because it's always the same. Because an ODS file is exactly the same as an ODT file. And I said, this is the advantage. Because if something changes it, you immediately understand that it's changed. XLS file, three levels. So not three flavors are better than one. And uh, because here you have one sheet. What is, in, in, in the case of the docx, there was Word. Here you have Excel, but not Excel being tighter, but just Excel. So another way of not being uniform and coherent. And then you have worksheet, and then you have sheet one X, XMM, which where you find all the contents. Go to ODP again, boring. It's the same. You only find uh, media and pictures because in the presentation you have uh, pictures and multimedia, and of course you need two folders to store pictures and multimedia. But again, the structure is the same: you have content, meta, archive, settings, types. Easy. And also, the, these files are consistent, so the structure of these files is always the same. Three levels. But here you have another difference. Because apart from the fact that uh, it's, uh, the, the first level is PPT and OK, then you have slides. And here you don't have a single file, but you have a file per slide. So again, 13th, that is not a standard, because it's not uniform, it's not coherent term of approach. So if it was two levels for the three, and two levels, and uh, one document for contents for each one, you could say it's not optimal as a standard, but at least it's coherent in, in its different, uh, different way of being applied. This is not, I mean, not only they, they have a different approach for each format, but then uh, in this case, for instance, you are, if, uh, let's say that the presentation breaks completely and uh, you have to unzip the file to recover all the contents. No way of knowing, let's say, I mean, this was a nine slide presentation that I used for a test, which is just a very short one. But let's say that you have a 100 file slide presentation. So you have 100 file here, and you don't have any correspondence with the media and slides, uh, and slides uh, folders. So there, there are codes, but not names. So if you have 100 images, you have to dig into 100 codes and not on 100 names of images. In the, in the case of ODF, you have image 1, image 2, image 3, image 4, image 5. So slide 1 usually has image 1, and so on and so forth. Uh, people that have seen my presentation know this very well. So the, the, this is the, uh, luckily we don't have women here, but not because I, I hate women, but because you cannot discuss about colors with women. You know, men have 16 colors in their mind, and we are fine. We are all 16 colors, this is red for everyone. And for a computer, it's FF0000, and we, we all agree on the concept. Uh, okay, uh, again, ODF is boring, because writer says format, color, FF0000, and count does the same, impress does the same. Word, W, okay, Word, W, you have a little bit of color, W again, Y, value, is the first one, Excel, color, RGB, it's not an RGB color, by the way, and then you have four F and four zeros, PowerPoint, A, Y, A, I tell you, because the, the program, when written, by the original software house uh, that and was bought by Microsoft was uh, 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 starting with A. So, as RGB color value FF0000. Okay, so you have three programs, three ways, no one of them respect the XML. Uh, 
syntax. We have three ways of describing colors. I mean, I could write, uh, there is a red here, it would have the same meaning. This is not standard, these are not standard. FO uh, semicolon color is a standard XML notation. None of this is a standard XML notation. No way. If you look at XML, you don't find this only color. You find only color, but not with a W before. Because a color can make color is a format. And then you, you must have an FO semicolon color. Again, of course, all this stuff is not known by users, and users do not mind about it. But if you put that in context, then users start to mind about it, especially users that are in charge of choosing the standards. Then there is the nice native handling of calendars. So the day that never existed. February 29, 1900. People have told me, oh, okay, but why do you care about the day that is so old? And then I show the, the chart of my, the Italo's life milestones that are just after a few slides. And uh, then they understand why. And LibreOffice has nodded. Uh, I, I tested that, I don't know if you did a lot about this. Yes. And how you did it. I tried that with Excel 2016, and it doesn't do that at all. No, that one works. Uh, it, 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 it works, works, but not if you take it uh, and uh, you, you, you take all the days that screws up uh, Excel again. It's an option in 2016. You can, you can turn on and off if you uh, Yeah, but. Still want to work with this or not? Yeah, sure, but uh, when I tested it was with uh, Excel 2013 and it was a nightmare. That was always working. Uh, but today it works if you are in, let's say, it works if you are in control, but for a normal, normal user it would be a nightmare anyway. Because it changes and screws up things. And by the way, if you save this as strict, it will uh, delete this one, but it would not delete the day. So what is on March 1st, 1900, will become, uh, uh, yes, the, 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 the shift all the days one day. Because I have sent an email, uh, uh, this, because my grandmother, I don't know if it's, just by chance, was born on February 28, 1900. So I, I did all the, my grandmother's life as a single spreadsheet, and then I saved the script, and my grandmother's result, birthday resulted February 27, because they shifted all the days. And Microsoft has not yet replied, because every six months I send again the, the, the spreadsheet to Microsoft asking, did you, s I mean, my grandmother is still asking me from, you know, uh, she was, that she, she died 20 years ago, but she's still asking me to fix Excel days for her life because she's not happy of being born one day before. Uh, other calendars, network days, it, now it works in some cases, not in all cases. So. In, in the past, uh, uh, Network Days was uh, giving us weekends, uh, Saturday and Sunday, which doesn't make Leo very happy, uh, because uh, it's due and for them uh, the Sunday, let's, let's say that the Sunday is Saturday, and for Muslim, the Sunday is Friday, which is perfectly okay, I mean, because it's just a convention. The fact that you pray on Sunday or on Saturday or on Friday is up to you and it's not up to the calendar. Uh, but Excel made it up to the calendar. Now they fix it partially on 2016, but not completely. Uh, and, but these are, have not been fixed. So language code have not been fixed. They use language code that are not standard. They don't use the ISO standard. They have issues with graphics because they refuse to implement SVG. 
So they have that Windows uh, WMF as a vector uh, format, but that has, been, uh, has never been approved. In addition, they, MATEC-L is a W3C standard, and uh, they have the, their format, which is even not compatible with MATEML. And again, MATEML is, is part of uh, standards. Uh, they create no standard colors. Uh, these are the SVG codes and these are the Office of XML codes. Uh, this is very nice for the Italians because it's a copper code, so that means that this, this light gray has a temporary uh, work contract. <laughs> So, sometimes in the future it will change. And uh, let's do some fine comparison. So, this uh, is a very stupid document. Two pages, it's lorem ipsum, don't try to interpret that. It was done on purpose to avoid any kind of potential influence of uh, the uh, dictionaries. So, lorem ipsum is treated as foreign language by everyone. Uh, I simply add, and this is the standard lorem ipsum, I, I simply add assembled uh, a list, a bulleted list, and uh, a table with the last uh, line in the table is merged cells. So, a very, I mean, a very basic document. These are the, the results. So, ODF 1.2, so any version of LibreOffice is 2022. I must say that once it was 2023. I do the comparison every three months. So in one case it was one line more. If the, that document is written by office, uh, it's, as you can see, it's more than twice the size in, 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 uh, in lines. Uh, office 2010 transitional, it's 1040 lines. Same document, same contents. 2011 transition, that was the Macintosh version, is 12,854, which is a worldwide record. I don't know if it's, uh, it's good for the Olympics, but if it's good for the Olympics, it's an Olympic record as well. 2013 transition was 1,590 lines. Same document, same XML. So it's no changes, pure saving, save as. Uh, create from scratch. I have a text document that I import every time. I apply all the uh, bolts and stuff. It takes two minutes. And I save it as uh, docx. 2016 transitional 11,667 and macOS 11,646. According to Microsoft declaration, the format of the two versions is exactly the same. Okay, only 20 some lines of difference. But then, uh, as I, a real stupid guy, and uh, I do the saving every three months, digging more, you know, they, they have a seasonal way of saving the document. So, 2013. Is 15,000, but in late 2018, it's 13,515 lines. The same document, same software, same machine. I use a virtual machine, so the virtual machine is a Windows 7 virtual machine. It's always the same, same configuration, same Windows license, same everything. There is only on the machine. There are only installed Microsoft Office and LibreOffice, so you cannot have any influenced by other software. Office of XML 2016 tra transitional in 2017, it's 11,667, but in early 2018 it was only 969. They probably realized what they did. So in late 2018 it's again 11,288. Macintosh. 2017, 11,646. Late 2018, 854. I have all the documents on my hard disk. I'm happy to share them with everyone. So that is the uh, 
Uh, how can you call standard a format that where the XML, which is the core of the format, changes to that level? I mean, if it was 222 to 223, let's say even 250, you can say, you know, maybe some way of parsing the XML changes the number of lines, but going from 854 to 13,515 for the same document is just impossible. Uh, let's pretend that Shakespeare writes in XML. So, uh, of course, sorry, star text, uh, it would be just text. As I show this to people that is no knowledge, I use star text and, uh, and text. Just a question for the new script as well. They, they were uh, yes, yes. Uh, on the script, uh, actually, that is more... Uh, uh, there, there, is, there was a point, which is not the latest, uh, version where the strict and the transitional were identical character by character, so that means that one was not the other. But as I'm not technical, I don't trust myself on this. So uh, with the strict is, uh, but the problem is that no no user is using strict. So no, for, for, for the of yeah, the I have. Yeah. Let's say that I have to dig a little bit on strict and do a better comparison because with strict things change a little bit, not completely. Uh, so of course, star text would be only text, and end text would be backslash text. But I show that it uh, to to students of six years old, so mm, not showing them the XML. So this is Shakespeare according to LibreOffice, okay? And this is Shakespeare according to Microsoft Office. So two, it's uh, of course uh, a paragraph. Then uh, it tells you keep together because then there is a single line with a space, and then B, and so on and so forth. And so this is the way that a simple I mean, to be or not to be, this is the question, I mean, it's, I think, one of the simplest sentences known in the world. And uh, you go from one line of XML to, I think, 40 or 50, 45 lines of XML. Of course, the, the reaction technical is, this is all correct under XML syntax. Yes! But why you do it so complicated? There must be some reason behind it, and I will give you the reason. But then, what is really amusing? This is about ex uh, about Excel. So these are the what I consider my life milestones. So I was first, I broke my nose, I got a degree, I got a first job, I got a PC, I got married, I was featured on BBC once in my life. I installed open office, I repair my nose. Uh, I launched LibreOffice and, and I got married again with the same wife, not being divorced in the meantime, uh, which I consider very important. Uh, so according to LibreOffice, these are the days which are human readable. Uh, and according to Excel, these are the dates which I think really... Uh, I, because uh, to Excel, users say you should know at least your birthday in Excel data. So my birthday is 19, 1948, and I'm proud of being born on the day 19, 1948. But ask someone to make a date out of that, and this is XML, it, this is an uh, Excel file transitional. No, and this is what. 99% of Excel users exchange every day. Should be forbidden by all because a date, how the hell you can uh, tell to a government, I store your day in that way. It's just something that is unacceptable. Again, I'm a stupid user, but I would not trust a program that stores the date in that way. Because if you, because this is an algorithm, of course, and in a program that is based on algorithm, if you, if you calculate the date with another algorithm, 
I don't know. I mean, anything may happen. So deduction of a very stupid Italo. LibreOffice developers, and I would applause of, to, to the one that we have here, so to Armin, a big applause because he's a genius. <laughs> and also to Svante, they are geniuses. And Microsoft is developing a bunch of assholes. They don't know how to develop. But I think that the fines are stuck with something that is completely useless just to reduce the chances that software that is not aware of the algorithm. Because if you save the day, if you change the algorithm based on the, on, on the day of creation of the software, of course you can embed that algorithm into the software and the software checks the day and according to the day opens the file in a certain way. It's easy. Even someone that has a degree in literature like me can understand this simple equation. So, I think the issue is there. They still have a turnover of $25 billion based on Office Open XML files. So they will never allow anyone to decently open and save those files. Uh, which I think uh, is an issue for all of us, is an issue in terms of cost. And uh, unfortunately, the cost uh, is very difficult to calculate. But we had some luck. So the National Institute of Standard and Technologies was uh, uh, approached by the U U.S. capital facilities industry. These are the people that give to the uh, to people that is building skyscrapers or large building in the states, large department stores, large you know huge buildings, which need a huge amount of money. So usually, when you build such a building, you never pay cash up front everything. You go to someone that gives you the money, and then when the building is finished, you give back the money. But of course, these guys are not stupid. And uh, in, the, in all the money that they were giving, they, they, they were asking, of course, for some, uh, some evidence of, the, of the, spend, the expenditure, and one billion dollar was missing. So they asked to the National uh, in, Independent Party, they said, please make a research where we are losing that billion dollar, because a billion dollar is a billion, I mean, I need a billion dollar to live each year. So if we, I, I would lose the, that billion dollar, I would be worried. And they made a 67 page document, happy to share with you, that is called Cost Analysis of Inadequate Interoperability. I think that this is clear in terms of, so, if you don't have interoperability, this is analyzing where what lack of interoperability is causing. Okay, data translation cost only two, two million dollars. Okay, negligible. Manual reentry cost four hundred sixty-two and uh, something dollars. Uh, reworking design files less than one million dollars. One million dollars, so that is acceptable. Let's say that related. This is before the the work start, and this is after the work start. Of course, I'm summarizing the document, but I'm really willing to give you the, the document. You can read it. There is an entire paragraph uh, explaining what there is in the table. So this is after. The, the, the work has started. You have another three hundred and sixty-eight uh, thousand dollars and twenty-seven million for manual re-entry cost. Manual re-entry means that the documents were not readable, so they have to re-enter the document. So, out of this five hundred million dollars per year are lost by one single industry, one single industry, independently how big it is, but one single industry loses 500 million dollars per year 
because of interoperability. So interoperability is a huge cost for companies. You can imagine what happens uh, in other industry banking system where you have contracts. You cannot read the contract, you have to re-enter manually the entire contract. Insurance. You have all the policies. You, you, you have an old policy, you lose the document, you have to re-enter manually the entire policy. Of course, it's hidden cost, not visible, because this is people that is working at their desk. But this is what interoperability is causing. It's causing a lot of loss in terms of money. And I think this is important. I'm happy to work with any of you uh, to promote this kind of information. Of course, this is kind of a marketing presentation. It's not, it's not technical. Technical people will be horrified by what I say, but I don't mind because uh, uh, when I talk to people and uh, when I talk to Italian politicians, they usually, at the end, they, they don't say anything. Then when I go, out, when I exit the, 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 the room, they, they follow me and say, but is everything true? And I said, I can send you the documents. So it's everything true. I have all the documents. All, all I've shown you is based on facts, not on invention. And luckily, we had this research by the, the National Institute of Standard and Technologies because we were missing any data on interoperability cost. Questions? Maybe it's too late because I speak too much. I don't know yet. Thank you very much. So if you have a question, I'm happy to answer the question, even if we are late. Come on, I didn't say anything astonishing for you. You should be all with me. They would do it every day. The fact that I have stopped talking about Office of an XML, I think three, four years ago when the, the real issues came out, shows that they know that it's totally crap. Uh, but of course, it defends their uh, their position. But do they so, use it? Do they use it at all? They don't use the standard or XML. The strict. They use the. They, they use the transitional, you don't find strict documents. And, uh, but I have to be further, and I, I will do that during the next quarter, because I need to really, because the problem with the, with the, with the strict is that in some cases they take the transitional and they tweak the transitional to make it strict. So they, in, in the process, they, they lose some pieces inside, so they, you still have some transitional content in the strict document. Because, it, it, I mean, I showed you a two-page document or a, a short Excel, but just take a normal Excel 
of uh, five sheets uh, for 1,000 line each, which is rather normal for in a company. So that means that probably that Excel would be 200 or to 300,000 lines of XML. And to convert that from transitional to strict, you can lose some bits in 300,000 lines. It's very easy. Because even if you have a very good algorithm, boy, the way that they write it, they repeat the color of a line, every line of a document. So that's because LibreOffice creates the styles and then names the style of the line. So let's say that you have 100 lines of 100 different colors. LibreOffice will create 100 styles of lines and then before the content of each line will put the code of the style. Which is, of course, I think the only way, because uh, if you change the content of a line, the only way is to create a style and identify it. Office of an XML repeats the contents of the style content of a line, start of every line. So you, the number of redundant components is so wide that that is really difficult to keep track of everything, even for a parser, because, uh, you know, you may have one line followed by some strange characters, and the combination makes the previous part not easy to understand as the other ones. So, I, 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 my idea is I want to create a very long document, maybe taking uh, some document like the Hamlet, uh, which is uh, common, uh, which is now public domain, uh, and uh, save it as ODF and Office of an XML. So it's a 700 pages document to see what happens.